Jay Guruji, Shukrana Guruji. Um, so if you're anything like me, um, you're probably sitting back quietly wishing that the satsang is going to be done in completely in English so that you can understand everything that's being said. So Guruji is granting that request today because I'm going to speak completely in English so everybody will be able to understand me hopefully. Um, so I, um, a couple of weeks ago, well I had a few people ask me, so do you really enjoy coming to the, you know, coming to the te to coming to the mandir, even though you probably don't understand anything that's going on, everything that's going on? And I, I, I said, you know, truly, I, that doesn't bother me because I've been told since I've been coming here that Guruji will, Guruji invites us to come here. So why would he come here? And why would he invite me to come here if there was not? intended for me to get some benefit from being here. So I truly believe that whatever um, message Guruji intends for me, it will be delivered to me in a way that I will understand it. Um, so I was thinking, um, about three weeks ago, um, I was sitting over here and Arati auntie came over and she requested that another auntie who was sitting next to me, I, I thought, after she talked to her, so she probably asked her to do some at the um, satsang today. And so I started thinking for the first time, what would I say if she asked me to do a satsang? Because I haven't had any of those wow moments, you know, where I've you know had this really difficult life experience and Guruji got me out of it, or at least not that I'm not recently. So I said, what what would I say? So I thought, well, I would just have to t say that I haven't had any of those big aha moments. At least not what I perceive to be an aha moment. But I can truly say that I feel Guruji's presence in my life. And so, lo and behold, I sat down and I listened to the Shabbats, of most of which I do not always understand, but I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, so I listened. And then uh, our Deonde came up and she started speaking and she said, I'm going to talk today about what it means to, to give satsang. And she started to say, your satsang doesn't have to be any of those big things, you know, like something huge happened to you or something, you know, like life, life changing happened to you. But you could just talk about those everyday experiences that you have with Guruji that lets you know that he's, that he's with you. And I, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm sure nobody saw my mouth drop open, but I was like, oh my goodness, that's what I was just here sitting thinking, that I don't have any of those big aha moments, but I have something, I'm sure I have something to share. And so I thought, that was examples of two things. Number one, that Guruji confirmed what I was thinking, was I was on the right track with what I was thinking, but number two, that she, she, she spoke partly in... Even after 20 years of marriage, I have to admit, I can't, uh, I can't completely distinguish between Hindi and Punjabi, so I don't know which one she was speaking, but it was, you can't either, okay, that's good. So I don't know what she was speaking, but I know the parts in English I clearly understood. So the message was delivered to me in a way that I was supposed to intend it. So it was two, two blessings for me. I was on the right track, and I understood what she was saying. Um, so... Um, I want to talk a little bit about not only my, my journey with, uh, with Guruji, but my spiritual journey growing up. I was raised a uh, Christian, um, Baptist to be exact. And so I remember when I was about seven years old, my mother had decided that myself and my sisters and herself, all of the girls, that we were going to be baptized at the same time. So you have to keep in mind I was seven. So in a Baptist church, when you're going to be baptized, at least in our church, the baptismal pool is in the, in the, it was built into the base of the pulpit. So you have to walk up to the stairs to get to the pulpit, and then the pool is in the bottom. So my mother walked me up to the stairs, and I could see the pastor was in the pool, in the water, with his long, it was a light colored robe, I don't remember exactly what color it was, but it was a light colored robe, and I get up there, and my seven-year-old brain tells me, you are not being baptized today. Because 
I got so afraid, I started crying, and I had to walk down the stairs back down to the pulpit. Needless to say, I was not baptized that day because I was so afraid. But I was baptized when I was 12 with another family. My, my family went through with the baptism and everything, but I, I, I got baptized with, a, with another group of people. Um, so I've been going to church all of my life. Um, um, I sang on the choir, we went to church, we went to Sunday school, and my mother always required, you had better, after going to church or the Sunday school, you had better been able to tell her something that you learned that day so that she knew that we were paying attention. And one of the early lessons that I remember learning, and I remember the pastor saying on multiple occasions that God is always with you. And when you pray, he may not always answer your prayers when you want him to. He may not always answer them in the time frame that you want him to, but he will always answer them. He will always be there right on time, meaning that he will give you what you want, what you need when you need it. And so, since I've been coming here to the Munder, I've heard that message again and again and again and again. And um, I don't know, I can't pinpoint a day or a time exactly when I felt like I was connected with Guruji, but I do know that um, I was introduced to Guruji by my sister-in-law, Seema Auntie. And um, we started, and when I say we, I mean myself and, and my uncle, Deepak, uh, we went to the Edison Temple for the first time. And I remember Seema would say, you know, Guruji singing his praises, he's great, he's wonderful. Once you're connected with Guruji, you're going to receive all of these blessings and it's just a wonderful experience. So we go to the Mandar in Edison and uh, we go the first time. And I remember on the ride back home, I was saying to Deepak, you know, I didn't feel any kind of connection. I, I don't I don't know, you know, what what happened, but I, I didn't feel anything. He was like, I didn't either. So we were so then we went a second time and we went a third time and it, we just didn't feel that we didn't feel that connection. And so then she told us about this temple. And so we came to this temple and I remember from the moment that I walked in the door, I felt like on a spiritual level, I had arrived at a place where I was supposed to be. It felt like I had been here before and like I was I was destined to be here. And we've been coming ever since. Um, so I um, listening to the shabbats and like I said a few minutes ago that I don't I don't always understand everything that's going on with, with them. Uh, all of the words, but I do believe that music is a universal language. And you can get a sense through the music and through the intonation of the singers as to what they're saying. And you don't need to understand the words because the, I think the music is literally speaking to your soul. And your soul has the ability to understand things on a much deeper level than your brain ever could possibly do. And sometimes, like you always say, that uh, we have to have faith. And faith is you, you throw out your logic and throw out the reasoning, and that's what your brain does. It gets every, you try to make sense of everything, but you don't really need to do that with, with music. And with, when you have faith, you're going to get you know everything that you need. Um, so as I said, after that time that we, you know, when we first started coming here, we've been coming here ever since. Um, we have had two small satsangs in our house. And in both of those satsangs, and see my auntie, can everybody who was there can attest for it, Guruji made his presence in our home. We could see on the, remember on the couch in our, in our living room, you could see his silhouette on the cloth that was in our, in our you know, that was on the cloth that we had set up there. And then also there was, um, an imprint of where he was sitting. I haven't, I don't think I've actually experienced, had that experience of smelling the rose smell, but it was definitely very obvious to me on both occasions that Guruji made his presence in our house. And I was so, I remember I was so emotional, I was so happy that all I kept doing, I just kept crying because I thought Guruji had blessed us 
enough that he had made his presence in the most important place in your life and then that, that is at home. And as long as he's there with you, there with you, you know he's going to be everywhere with you. Um, so um, I have, as I said before, not had those big, what I perceive to be those big ahas. And maybe, you know, he is, those things that I talked to him about, maybe he is answering them, but I just haven't realized it yet. But I am, I have 100% faith that he is going to, that he's going to do it in the time that I need it. I'm willing, I mean, I know that I have to be patient and wait because I know he's going to answer things and probably even more things that I haven't even thought to answer, uh, to ask for. So, Jai Guruji, Shukrana Guruji, Jai Guruji.